Hey there! Here are five bosses that I think are worth grinding on your Iron Man in the mid game. For me, my definition of mid game is your combat stats are around 70 to 80, and gear wise, you probably have a Rune Crossbow, a Warp Scepter or Ivan's Blast, and a Dragon Scimitar. If you have better gear, that's great. These bosses are still a great idea to farm. But if your gear is much lower, you may want to focus on those a bit more before trying these bosses out. All of these bosses have drops that are useful to mid to end game irons, as well they have some easy to get combat achievements so you can work on those at the same time. Barrows are one of the first bosses that you'll grind on an iron. You get very good defensive gear, and the runes are very useful as well. If you're able to push for the Hard Mauritania Diary before starting this grind, it's a pretty good idea. Getting 50% more runes every single chest adds up very quickly. If the Diary is too far away, grinding barrows for a few good items is still a pretty nice idea. I've seen a lot of people say barrows is a noob trap. I don't fully agree with this. You're required to have a full set of Barrows items for a Diary step, which this will be useful for any account. Having tanky armor at a low level is a very good idea as well, and if you can pull Carols or Arams pieces, you will be using those all the way into the very late game, and this is not even to mention all the collection log slots you'll get, which is a lot of accounts' very end game goals. If you have 83 magic, you can use the Arceus Spellbook and teleport there while using the Warped Scepter. If you want to use Ivan's Blast, you can build a Barrow's Teleport in your house and use Teleport to House to get there. If you don't have the magic level for the teleports, you can use the Morton Teleports that you may have accumulated from your Clue Scrolls, the Mauritania Legs 3 if you went ahead and got the Heart Diary done, or the Draken's Medallion. All of these will work to get there well. Even more important than the Hard Mortenia Diaries is the Medium Combat Achievements. Finishing the Medium Combat Achievements before doing Barrows will give you Gommel's Hilt 2. While you wear Gommel's Hilt 2, you will not be affected by the tr Prayer Drain effect in the Barrows Catacombs. Seracnus so is a very good boss to start getting warmed up to PVM. You have to move around a little bit and do a couple prayer switches, not too many though. You can get a decent weapon from it, a crush weapon, the Seracnus Cudgel, as well as a lot of red spider eggs to really help out the herb war grind. Besides these, you also get good alks, runes, and gems. Seracnus so is a very good boss for Clue Scrolls, in particular the Hearts and Elites. It's also got a top tier pet that can be recolored once you find the egg sacs from the Grubby Key. Once it drops the cudgel, you'll probably want to use that, but if your best weapon right now while you're starting this is a Dragon Scimitar, you can go buy a Dragon Mace because Seracnus so is weak to crush. Getting to Seracnus isn't too bad. If you put your house in Hosidius, you can always just teleport to your house, and then it's a short run away. This is a pretty good house location as well, because for your herb runs, there's a Hosidius patch very close. If you aren't able, or you just don't want to move your house to Hosidius, you can always use the Cardest Memoirs, the Book of the Dead, or the Xerix Amulet Teleport. These will all work. While fighting her, you will want to pray melee and piety. You're gonna switch to range when she's not next to you. Um, this usually happens right after she locks you in the webs. While you're locked in the webs, this is the best time to eat because you can't attack her from the web. Once she summons her little spiders, I recommend just killing the blue one because that's gonna hit you with mage attacks, and leave the orange ones be. The orange ones will melee you, and most of the time you're praying melee against her anyways, so they're not a big hassle. Oh, Zolra. This is the boss that every Iron Man needs to grind, and that every Iron Man will find some excuse to put it off for a bit. The good thing about learning this boss is your deaths are free until you get 50 kill counts. The Warped Scepter is a great addition for grinding this boss, 
as you can pair it with Lunars to cure your Venom quicker. If you were crazy enough to grind out your Herb Lore for Anti-Venoms before doing Zolra, you can use those here. But likely you'll be using either Cure Me or Anti-Poisons for this. Using the Zolra Helper plugin on Runelight will help a lot while learning the rotations and what you should pray and where you should stand. This is one of the first bosses that you will likely die at several times before getting the hang of it. If you decide to put it off a bit, that's fine, as gear does help this boss a lot, but this is totally doable with a Rune Crossbow and Warp Scepter or Ivan's Blast. This boss has some very good uniques that almost any account will want to grind for, but the secondary drops are also very good. This is a great place to stock up on antidotes for the rest of the game. Even drops like Swamp Tar are pretty nice for herb lore training with your lower level herbs that don't have any real good uses. As long as you have 76 agility, getting here is very easy. Just take the fairy ring B, J, S and hop on over. Once you get a few kills, you can use the teleport scrolls, but these scrolls are pretty hard to keep up at a lower level. I even struggle keeping up the scrolls at a higher level because I like to do one kill trips. If you don't have the agility level, you want to take a charter ship, but it still doesn't take very long at all. Vorkath is one of the few bosses where you're going to want the normal drops more than his uniques. While his uniques are pretty cool, the only useful one is a guaranteed drop at 50 kill count. Dupes of the head are pretty nice just in case something happens, like you wander into the wilderness on a high-risk world on accident, or if anything else happens. His other uniques are cool to have, but they don't really have any big uses, apart from possibly the Wyvern Visage just in case you want to range dragons. His normal drops though, oh they are good. The bones are the big ones. Her is one of, if not the hardest skill in the game for an Iron Man. Vorkath dropping the best bones in the game is sure to speed it up. The scaly blue dragon hides that were recently added are also great to get blue dragon scales to help out Earth War. The Alex and supplies are nothing to laugh at either. There's a good reason so many people farm Vorkath for money. You do need to be on the standard spellback to, the spellbook to fight Warcath just for the Crumble Undead spell, so we've got a few ways to get to him. You can use the Fremenic Boots to teleport to Relica and then just take the boat from there. If you don't have the Fremenic Boots, you can use the Relica House Portal or the Enchanted Lyre. Both of them are still close teleports. If for some reason none of these three options work for you, you can always have the Lunar Island teleport in your house, and then you can go to Lunar Island, use the bank, gear up, and then after you're geared up and restocked, just talk to anybody on the island to get kicked off. If you did the Elite Diaries and you don't get, get kicked off the island anymore, you can use this and it has the same effect. Vorkath can easily be done with a Void and a Salve Amulet. The Salve Amulet and the Slayer Helm don't stack, so don't worry about being on task for Vorkath. That being said, if you are on task, this is one of the few Slayer tasks you'll do without a helmet, but you can still get the experience. Make sure to imbue the Salve Amulet from Nightmare Zone before coming. I highly, highly recommend bringing a Slayer Staff and setting it to Crumble Undead so you don't have to manually cast the spell for the spawn. Maybe this one's a bit controversial, and maybe this one's cheating a little bit, but this one is going to be a 3 in 1. Spindle, Calvarion, and Arsho are all very doable at a mid-level, with very, very little risk involved. Not only do they each drop a part of the best special attack weapon in the game, they also have very good secondary drops. Besides their respective rings, and upgrades to the wilderness weapons you can get from Remnants. Alvarion will drop Blinds of Zamorak, 
Mortmeyer fungus, Renars, dragon bones, and sandfew serums. Our show drops seeds, gems, dragon hide, and toad blacks, and Spindle will drop gold ore, spider eggs, and snapdragons. All three of them drop a very good supply of runes, cannonballs, and the dragon pickaxe. Grinding for a, vo for a Void Waker early on would result in a very good prayer experience, good herb lore secondaries, and lots of potions. If you really want to avoid the peak airs, you can bond an account and set them outside the cave with the Wilderness Player Alarm turned on. Whenever somebody comes by the outside, they usually leave right away if they see somebody just sitting there. But if they don't, your screen was flashing, so you had plenty of time to be alerted to their presence. Oh. I wanted to include Zalcano, but I understand some people don't consider Zalcano a boss because it's a healing boss. Zalcano is very easy to learn, especially if you just jump in the mass world and just follow the crowd for a few kills. After you get the hang of it, hop over on a smaller world or use the friend chat to find a group to do it with. The smithing experience and the crafting experience you bank from this boss is pretty nutty. I personally went very hard on Zalcano before starting to seriously grind Slayer. So I was able to start Slayer with over 100,000 cannonballs from all the steel bars. As well as... Yeah, I did my account in an unusual way. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks.